I feel like this is America's tight end. You know I how mean, Captain sure. America? That's America's ass. That's America's well, ass. I mean, America's this is, ass this in, is the my tight end. A, in the form of a tight end is Sam Laporta. Okay. <laughs> sure. The best way to absolutely destroy your fantasy season is by drafting landmine bust picks oh boy. in the first couple rounds. Remember, last year, Austin Eckler was a first-round pick. Yes. Travis Kelsey was a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. Tony Pollard was an early second-round pick. So, Jeez. of course, you want to draft good players, but you want to avoid the guys who are landmines. And in today's video, we are bringing you six players who will make or break your season. Guys that you're drafting very early, foundational pieces. So, That's I'll right. start here. Brandon Ayuk. I'll Ayuk be honest. This guy is giving me bubble guts when I'm drafting him in redraft leagues oh right boy. now. I just feel like it's going to be incredibly difficult for him to repeat his 2023 season. I want my wide receiver one or two to demand targets, like at least 130 targets, or I'm going to have to rely on that receiver being one of the most efficient per touch, per target receivers in the NFL. So let's play good cop, bad cop based off what we okay. saw last year. Okay, let's start with good cop. All right, last year, he was ninth in receiving yards per game. He had the second best yards per route run. He finished as a wide receiver 14 in PPR and on a points per game basis, wide receiver 16. Sure. Let's play bad cop for a second because how is he going to repeat that? Last year, he was 37th in targets. He had less targets last year than Trey McBride, who didn't even start the entire year as a tight end one for the Cardinals. He had less targets last year than Jacoby Myers, Tyler Lockett, David Njoku, Drake London in a run first offense. And by the way, he's on a San Francisco offense that was 30th in passing attempts per game. The Niners throw the ball last year less than the Falcons, the Bears who had Justin Fields starting, the Broncos, the Steelers, and the Giants. Ayuk finishes a wide receiver 14, and at the moment, he's being drafted as a wide receiver 12. I just don't understand why we're, I feel like we're overdrafting him at this point. His sure. situation hasn't improved. CMC is still there. Debo is still there. Kittle is still there. Actually, it might have gotten worse. They added a round one wide receiver in Ricky, Ricky Pearsall. Yeah. I'm not saying Ricky Pearsall is going to like hurt Ayuk, but there's just all, only so many pieces of this pie that you can get. If Purdy takes a step back, if I, Ayuk even takes like a minimal step back, these guys don't have to implode. If they just take a minimal step back, you might end up with a top 24 finish rather than a top 12, which is what you're expecting. And look, the opposite side of the coin, I, I imagine the replies here are, well, if he was a wide receiver 14 with the 37th most targets, what could he do in a featured role? And yes, he isn't getting that many targets, but he's on one of the most efficient offenses in the NFL, right? San Francisco sure. last year was top four in passing attempts per game, rushing yards per game, and points per game. So I, I see both sides of it. He is so efficient. He's so good. But I just feel like I want more consistency, more volume, more reliability. I'm too worried that there's too many reasons why he could not pay off his ADP. Sure. I mean, I guess the a question for you is, would you feel comfortable with him going to another offense? Like, obviously, all the rumors with Washington. Would you feel better or even more concerned? See, I thought about that, and I was like, uh -huh. I don't think there's an offense he goes to where I feel better. Like, sure. So I feel like <clears throat> with him at currently around wide receiver 12 prices being drafted, you're expecting a potential yeah. top 12 season. If he goes to Washington with a rookie quarterback, historically, that's not likely. If he goes to Pittsburgh with Russell Wilson and sharing the spotlight with yeah, Pickens. Yeah, that was my concern. That was my concern it just, with all those I teams. I don't know, dude. Like, I really like him. But I think his value I, falls in, in both I think he should and be dynasty. more like, he should be drafted around wide receiver 20, not wide receiver 12. It's just, that's just too high for me. I'm concerned, but I think it'll make or break your season. I understand. I understand. All right. My first player at the wide receiver position, let's stay there, is Drizzy Drake Rogers. The expectation currently is through the roof yes, with the is. new changes with the Atlanta Falcons. It's hard not to be high on Drake London coming into the 2024 season and looking at all of the offseason changes that they made, you know, hiring Raheem Mostert, him bringing Zach Robinson from the Rams, them acquiring Kirk Cousins, going from the 26th in a points per game basis from ninth that Zach Robinson is bringing from that Los Angeles Rams offense. That's exciting. Kirk Cousins, since 2018, when he was with the Minnesota Vikings, he has produced a top 10 wide receiver yeah. every single year outside of 2019, where Stephon Diggs finished as a wide receiver 24, averaging 14.1 fans points that year that is really good for drake london but also the other side to that is it could all go to shit 
Let's be honest mm-hmm. with you. Kirk Cousins is not the same after the Achilles injury. The offense is not clicking in year one because sometimes it takes a year or two for those offenses to start to click. Maybe London is not what we expect him to be. Maybe he's not the player that we were hoping for. And maybe the number one target is actually Kyle Pitts, and he's kind of like TJ Hawkinson of <laughs> this offense, right? Mm-hmm. Drake London is kind of somebody I'm, I think can make or break your season. You know, you don't have to wait until August to play fantasy. People are playing fantasy football today right now. over on underdogfantasy.com. If you want to get into a real league, best ball tournaments, real money on the line, then go to underdogfantasy.com, use a promo code LAND to sign up. We're going to match your deposit 50% up to $250, which means $125 free dollars on. on us. Maybe you don't want to get in best ball tournaments, but do you like player props? Because they got great player props for every sport over on Underdog Fantasy. One of the most recent things that they've done is giving us season-long projections where you can bet higher or lower. So, for example, a recent one, Drake London, Amari Cooper, higher or lower than their receiving line, which is under 1,000 yards. You can make that bet and win some money if you're right. So check out the pinned comment. Get signed up. Let's play some underdog today. All right. This is not going to be popular. This is everyone. I feel like this is America's tight end. All right. You know I how mean, Captain sure. America. That's America's ass. That's America's well, ass. I mean, America's this is, ass this is my tight end. In the form of a tight end <laughs> is Sam Laporta. Okay. Sure. Sure. And I am a little concerned about Sam Laporta right now because you are literally drafting him at his ceiling, right? Tight end one across the board pretty much. Had the best rookie season from a tight end ever. But I think we need to take that season into context. And it's all about the price for me. He's just so expensive. I'm really worried that he's going to impact people's teams in a negative way this year because of what it costs to get him. Okay. Laporta's tight end one season last year was the lowest points per game finish from a tight end one since 2016. That's seven years ago. The lowest points per game finish from a tight end one since 2016 and in the last 20 seasons he put up the third lowest points per game finish from a tight end one okay so travis kelsey in 2016 and antonio gates in in 2006 were the only tight ends in the last two decades to have a lower points per game from a tight end one finish and by the way even this year on a points per game finish laporta was not the tight end one kelsey had more points per game hawkinson had more points per game sure and at the end of the day, like I said, he's just too expensive. I think he's a lock for a top five finish, but I don't think you're getting the advantage of the number one tight end in fantasy drafts that you are typically used to getting, right? For the last six, seven years, it's been Travis Kelsey. And you're like, yeah, that guy's getting me 15 to 20 points per game this year. I just know that's going to happen. Well, there are better options down the board, I think, right? Sam Laporta right now is going early round three, sometimes late round two. When you look at his ADP, and I averaged it out from Underdog Sleeper and ESPN, And there are other options, I think, that are better picks because of the price, right? Trey McBride, I think, is a better pick. You can get Trey McBride late round four. Same with Mark Andrews. Dalton Kincaid is mid to late round five. Kyle Pitts is mid round six. George Kittle is mid round six. Evan Ingram, you're getting sometimes in the seventh round. Yeah, that makes sense. Caleb Porta has to be your second or third pick in Mm -hmm. order to get him in drafts this year. I would rather fill out the rest of my roster. And I'll be honest, like, I don't see why... Trey McBride can't finish ahead of Laporta. I don't see why Mark Andrews, that like that range of outcome isn't there for Dalton Kincaid, for Kyle Pitts, for George Kittle. So sure. as much as I love Sam Laporta, I just feel like it's just a little too expensive. He is a make or break guy, but of course you can make the argument he can only get better, right? 14 points per game as a rookie, unheard of. Uh, and you can make a case that he's on one of the best offenses in the NFL. But ultimately, man, I just, I can't pay that price. I don't think you're getting the advantage of the tight end one. I think the tight end one and the tight end six are maybe just as valuable as each other in drafts, but they're very different in price. Yeah, the, the price is pretty significant there. And I always think of Dolce Kincaid where I can get maybe two to three rounds later. And that yep. just feels t- 10 times more comfortable than drafting the Sam Laporta. So I, I completely, I agree. completely agree. All right, my second player, make or break at the running back position. Let's go to Green Bay. Josh. All right. Jacobs started off with the pros, okay? He led the league in rushing in 2022. Had a phenomenal year that year. He's on a better offense in Green Bay, right? He's getting more scoring opportunities. That's all great. But for the price right now versus his performance in 2023, I feel confident that he will break your team rather than make your team. Okay. And let's look at the cons. I really broke it down into two things. 
Okay, in my first one, he's coming off of his worst season yet, right? The inefficiency is a killer for Josh Jacobs. From 2022 to 2023, you can see in yards per carry, he's going from 8 to 47th, and then the missed tackles force from 1st to 38. And honestly, what I really yeah. looked into was Amir White and what he did in the second half with his limited opportunities and compare that to Josh Jacobs. In every single category, Zamir White did a lot more with a lot less. And the second you know, concern of my archon, you can say, is the running sure. back snap percentages, right? Matt LaFleur has always had the belief in a running back by committee. But looking at the Packers running back snap percentages since 2019, you can see that this has been essentially a split backfield with Aaron yeah. Jones and uh, Jamal Williams with A.J. Dillon. This is telling me that this backfield would continue to be a running back by committee. And Josh yeah. Jacobs might have one of his lowest carries opportunities he has had in his career. And yeah. for somebody going in the third round that I would rather wait to get a James Cook, maybe a round or two later, or Joe Mixon, a Rashad White, and Alvin Kamara two rounds later. What about a Ramondre Stevenson three rounds later? He's currently going in the third round, Josh Jacobs, anywhere from early third to late third. Yeah, you know, so they, they asked Matt LaFleur about that. They said, do you think Jacobs, you know, you, you, you run running back by committee here in Green Bay. Do you think Jacobs will change that? His reply was basically... I think Jacobs is capable of being a workhorse for any NFL offense. However, here in Green Bay, we do things a little bit differently. We like to rotate and keep people fresh is essentially what he said. So to me, it doesn't sound like he's going to get that 80 plus percent of the snaps that he's used to in an offense. So I, I hear where yeah. you're coming from. Yeah. All right. One more running back uh, that I have to talk about here. Kyron Williams. I'm not going to tell you guys I'm out on Kyron Williams. I am willing to sit here and tell you that if, if Kyron Williams is who he was last year, he will be the pick of the draft, sure. right? Like, he will be the biggest value in the entire draft. I mean, he averaged one rushing touchdown per game last year, and only Christian McCaffrey had more fantasy points per game than Kyron Williams, okay? So, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't get injured, mm -hmm. he might be the best value pick of the entire NFL draft. However, we have to try and predict change, and I am a little concerned about Kyron Williams. You know, Sean McVay, right. he has a history of rotating running backs from year to year. Hasn't had a running back with a back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing season since 2017-2018. He also hasn't had a running back repeat as a team's leading rusher since 2019. And my concern is, number one, Kyron Williams already missed five games last year. Okay? Sure. When he missed five games last year, nobody was ready to step in. Nobody. Okay? You had Daryl Henderson, who was working at Kroger's. They decided to bring him in. That okay, was it, it, it just there was no one to take Kyron Williams' job. That has changed. If Kyron Williams goes down with an injury, will he be the guy when he returns? If Blake Corum is there and Blake Corum is doing well, like does he just become the you know number one no matter what? Sure. I don't know. I think there's more pressure in that backfield if Kyron misses games. I think Blake has a legit shot of taking a huge role in that offense. And by the way, Blake Corum was one of the most efficient goal line running backs in college football in the last three years. In the last three years, he has 56 rushing touchdowns. If you look at Kyron Williams' rushing touchdowns last year, I told you he had 12 rushing touchdowns. Yeah. Only one of those rushing touchdowns came outside of the 10-yard line. All of them outside of one came from within the 10-yard line. So... Blake Corum is a specialized kind of guy in the red zone. He's a very high IQ player, great goal line back. If Kyron goes down with an injury, I don't think, you know, th there's a chance that Blake Corum could take that job, as crazy as that sounds. So huge hit or miss potential here. The sky is unlimited, but the floor, I think, is really concerning with how high you have to draft him. All right, going to my next player, actually getting drafted back-to-back okay. -back with Kyron Williams at the running back position is Devon Achain here. And starting off with my concerns, really only one concern, does have a small injury tag that, let me remind you, he did miss six games in his rookie year, and he was missing a lot of the preseason, a lot of middle of yeah. the year as well. But my true concern, my true, true concern is, I feel like I'm drafting a running back by committee at the RB7 to 9 currently. Granted, he had an incredible rookie year, which all took us by surprise. 43% of the snaps share, had 12 point serving carries, and was phenomenal on the ground, specifically in a fantasy points perspective, with 17.3 fantasy points per game. But what about Raheem Mostert? 
who just had a career year. What about Jalen Wright, who was just drafted in the third round? You let me know in the community, because I do want to open this up for the fantasy community. Are you comfortable drafting a guy that's in a three-headed monster that I am projecting to come in and draft him at the 2-9? He was drafted at the 2-9 in our last mock draft. I think we're drafting him at his ceiling, and we are projecting as a community too much on Devon and Chain right now. I would say kind of similar. We should be drafting him around round four, maybe where Isaiah Pacheco, James Cook sure. is currently going right now, because once again... Uh, once opening up to the community, name a, name a running back in the past that had limited opportunities, that was extremely efficient, that was getting drafted as a top seven to nine running back. I can't yeah. not, I can't name one player. But once again, we are projecting the upside with Devon. We're projecting more carries, more snaps, the hope that he stays healthy, and, and honestly, the belief that Raheem Mostert is not going to stay healthy because he hasn't stayed healthy in his career outside of sure. last year. So I'm just a little bit concerned, once again, that we are drafting him at his ceiling. Yeah, well, I don't know if you want to scroll down on our script that we have here. Uh, that's a video I'm preparing. <laughs> I, didn't even, my, I didn't even see that. Okay. So I don't want to talk too much on Devon A. Chan because I got a, a video. So we both agree. We both agree about him. But I do think I, so, there are some times when I just get annoyed at the fantasy community because there are players that I love that they price me out of paradise, basically, with him. That's that's how I feel with Devon H. Devon, just like, I love the guy. Like you know, I love this guy from our dynasty channel. But y'all are just you're making it so difficult to draft him. So I kind of agree with where you're coming from there. Make a break. Clearly, there is no ceiling, but clearly, that guy is being drafted too high. Way too uh, high. So let us know what you guys think. Six players that we think are make or break. You know, they could make your season, they could break your season, and you have to spend significant draft capital on them. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you very soon. Hold up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh.